Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Occult Movie Tuesdays. Today we are talking about the John Carpenter film, They Live. Yeah, this is, this is a big one. This is a big one. I wasn't even sure if I wanted to review this because this is such a beloved film by so many fans of horror and sci-fi, but uh, I'm going to give it an honest go. I love this movie. I think I saw this when I was younger, like maybe in my teens or early 20s. I do remember liking it, and I just never got around to rewatching it. I did buy this DVD. I'm trying to remember. I think I actually found this at a pawn, or, um, like a used DVD store a couple of years ago. Uh, this is the Screen Factory edition. So we'll talk about cast, uh, production, critical response, all that jazz. So I hope you'll stick around at the end. Thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody who subscribed recently. I'm up to 379 subscribers as of the recording of this video. So thank you to everybody who's decided to join uh, my or subscribe to my channel and follow along. I appreciate your support. They Live. This is a sci-fi horror movie from the year 1988. This was directed by John Carpenter, of course. Halloween, Big Trouble in Little China, uh, Prince of Darkness. I mean, the list goes on the thing. Uh, this is another one of his really really good 80s uh movies in my opinion and i think i'm not alone most people consider this to be uh, a classic of the genre now um though i think at the time this wasn't uh well received this movie stars roddy piper who was of course a uh, pro wrestler who retired in 2011 and he passed away in the year 2015 so almost 10 years ago rest in peace Ro roddy rowdy roddy piper uh, I'm not into wrestling. Uh, and this also serves Keith David, who I love. I love Keith David. Uh, he was, of course, in The Thing, as well as um, he played the dad in There's Something About Mary. I don't know. I'm sure, like, he's done tons of movies, but I always, honestly, I always think of him um, as the dad and There's Something About Mary because he's, he was, I, I don't know how many comedies he's done or how many comedies I've seen him in, but he was really funny in that movie. He was such a... Um, just like such a troublemaker and he gave Ben Stiller's character such a hard time. I just, every time I see that movie, his character cracks me up and he's not in it for a long time. But, uh, so it's mainly those two cats that are in it, um, Roddy Piper and, and Keith David. The synopsis, the film follows an unnamed drifter who discovers through special sunglasses that the ruling class are actually aliens concealing their appearance and manipulating people to consume, breed, and conform to the status quo via subliminal messages in the mass media. So I probably should have said spoiler before I said that, because that's basically the whole movie. But um, it's from 1988, so if you haven't seen it already, sorry. Um, I think everyone knows the skull-faced aliens in the movie and uh, how all the street signs uh, say conform and buy and reproduce and all this stuff. I don't think it's... a uh, I guess I'm trying to defend myself for spoiling it if you hadn't seen it. So sorry about that. Um, this is based on a 1963 short story called Eight O'Clock in the Morning by a person named Ray Nelson. Carpenter's, Carpenter has stated that the themes of They Live stemmed from his dissatisfaction with the economic policies of then U.S. President Ronald Reagan, as well as what Carpenter saw as increasing commercialization in both popular culture and politics. And I did read some, something else that they said that, oh, you know, more recently people were saying this was like some kind of analogy for like fascism and Nazism and all this stuff. And Car Carpenter basically just said, no, that's not what this movie's about. It's literally about, um, you know, consumerism and yuppies. So don't, you know, definitely there's some heavy messages in this that are uh, easy to pick out um but this is what this is about they live was only a minor success upon release debuting at number one in the north american box office it initially received negative reviews from critics who lambasted its social commentary writing and acting however it later gained a cult following and experienced a significantly more favorable critical reception it is now regarded by many as one of john carpenter's finest films and i would agree um the um you know, Halloween and The Thing and this one, basically my favorite John Carpenter's. I like other other ones of his as well, like The Fog and stuff. But uh, this to me was like, this This is so my era. Like I was 18 when this came out. 
Um, and I definitely remember seeing this on home video back in those days. And I, this was like, I felt like, oh, this movie's for us. Like, the, you know, it's like just so cool. And it mixes sci-fi and horror and, you know, uh, Roddy Piper's just super cool and this is like the everyman kind of thing. Uh, I just, when I think back of nostalgia and things that, because I wasn't, like, I was, I liked horror movies back in the 80s, but I wasn't like, you know, like a mega fan like some people. Um, but this one for me was definitely like, this is my, this is a movie for me. Like, this is my generation or whatever. Um, not to get too off topic, but whenever I watch this, it takes me right back to those days of being like, 18, 19, uh, hanging out with my friends, watching cool horror movies, smoking cigarettes, which I don't do anymore, of course, uh, drinking coffee and just generally being a dirtbag, but, um, being a cool dirtbag watching They Live, yeah. Um, the budget for this film was $3 million and the box office was $13.4 million in North America. I couldn't find a worldwide total, but that was pretty successful for 1988 to have a $10 million return just in North America. They Live was shot in eight weeks from March to April of 1988, principally on location in downtown Los Angeles. One of the highlights of the film is, of course, the five and a half minute fight uh, between the two main characters over a pair of special sunglasses. Special sunglasses. Uh, Carpenter recalls that the fight took three weeks to rehearse and that it was an incredibly brutal and funny fight. And if you've ever seen this movie, you know the fight scene. It is hilarious. And it just seems like it's, you can't believe how long it goes on. And just when you think they've the both of them have clobbered each other to the point where they can't stand up anymore. They get back up and start fighting again. It's just so funny. Um, very well executed, of course. The film's original release date, advertised in promotional material as October 21st, 1988, had been pushed back two weeks to avoid direct competition with Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers. Now, someone can leave in the comments below. I don't know if John Carpenter had anything to do with Halloween 4. I don't think he did, but um, it's interesting that his own sort of like this franchise spinoff um, prevented his movies from being released on the time at the time that it wanted to be released. They wanted it to, to be released. So, um, but yeah, so he got pushed back a couple of weeks, which is why it was released when it was. The critical response for this film, it currently holds an 86% on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, they Live was ranked as uh, number 18 on Entertainment Weekly's The Cult 25, The Essential Left Field Movie Hits Since 1983 list, which came out in 2008. Again, this movie wasn't, I don't think, super well received when it came out. I think a lot of people criticized the acting. Um, the may, Maybe the themes were a little too in your face for some critics, but um, fans of the genre love this movie. Um, critics may say what they want and I, like i said earlier i think this this movie is definitely considered like one of john carpenter's best and it's definitely a cult classic at this point um so yeah my thoughts on they live i love this movie this is such a rewatchable movie for me too like i love the makeup effects on the alien which you can see there um which i think it was one guy that played like most of the aliens in the movie um Again, I'm not into wrestling, but I thought Roddy uh, Piper was really good as kind of like the... And John Carpenter specifically picked him because he's kind of like an everyman uh, type character. Um, but yeah, uh, like I said, Keith David, amazing. Um, the It has the classic line, of course, I, I came here to uh, chew bubblegum and kick ass and I'm all out of bubblegum. That line comes from this film. Uh, the... Just the uh, the matte paintings for the street shots when they, when they so in the movie they put on these sunglasses and then they can see what the signs on the streets actually say so where it says like you know um, I I don't know what it says like buy buy something blah, blah blah and then when you put the glasses on all it says in bold letters is consume or you know uh, give your give your partner this gift of love or whatever and then when you put the glasses on it says like uh, reproduce or whatever, like, um, things like this. So it's really creepy. And even in 2024, this movie really holds up as far as the themes, probably more so than 1988, even if I were to, uh, be so bold. Um, the messages in this movie are eerie. 
in 2024, honestly, as much as they were in 1988. They're probably even more so now. This movie, I think, is... Um, I mean, horror fans and sci-fi fans, John Carpenter fans... Well, we all know this movie is incredible. I don't know how many people actually know this movie or watch it. Um, I couldn't find it streaming anywhere. You can definitely rent it on Prime Video, Apple TV, YouTube, and the Cineplex app in Canada as of the recording of this video. Um, so that's where you can watch it. But I didn't see it on any of the streaming services. I think it used to be on YouTube or um, Netflix in Canada for a while, but... Yeah, I love this movie. The alien makeup is really creepy. Um, when they put on the glasses and it's black and white, again, with those matte, I think they're matte paintings of the city street and stuff. Like, they're so spooky. Um, the fight scene is amazing. Um, yeah, it's just overall a really cool movie. It's a, just a cool movie, you know what I mean? Um, I, I wouldn't say, like... Uh, it's just it's just cool it's just cool so if you like sci-fi if you like kind of that dystopian sci-fi if you like john carpenter films uh this is john carpenter at his to me at his height um you're probably gonna like this movie if you like alien invasion like if you like v or things like that uh the arrival those types of things you're probably gonna dig this but this one's a little more gritty and that's i think what i like about it it's a little bit more um, I don't know, grounded and gritty. Uh, this is the Scream Factory Blu-ray. Like I said, I bought this at a used, uh, kind of collectible store a couple of years ago. I think I did pay like $20 used, but again, we don't, I don't get where I live in a very small town. We don't get a lot of cool stuff. So sometimes I just bite the bullet and pay for stuff. Plus I really wanted this in my collection. So this has got a reversible cover art. There's the, there's the new cover art which would have been commissioned when this came out. You can see there. Uh, that's the back. There's another picture of the alien there. So creepy. So spooky. So yeah, I was happy to add this to my collection. This is a uh, just a one disc. Uh, it's just the Blu-ray. Uh, special features on this include audio commentary with John Carpenter and Roddy Piper. A new interview with John Carpenter, the making of They Live, theatrical trailer, TV spot, and more. Um, this is rated 14 in Canada. Uh, it is a runtime of 93 minutes. Beautiful. Um, what else can I tell you about this? It is a Region A Blu-ray. So yeah, I think this one's still available. I don't think it's out of print or anything, so you should be able to find it if you want to pick up a copy for yourself. Um, this one, again, is put out by Screen Factory. Um, I'd like to find this on VHS, but I don't really see it around very often. But Yeah, those are my thoughts on They Live. What did you think of They Live? Do you consider it a cult classic or even just a classic for that matter? Uh, leave your comments below. Uh, consider giving me the thumbs up if you like this review. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Um, follow me over on Instagram at Night Owl Video where I try to do some updates. I'm not perfect yet, but I'm working on it. Um, and yeah, please leave your comments below what you thought of They Live, the 1988 John Carpenter classic. Um, I'm sure there's some people that still don't like it or think it's too heavy handed. Uh, I'd love to hear your opinions as well. This is kind of a, um, you know, this is open for people to have conversations and I've had some really great comments lately. So thank you to everybody who has commented on my videos and left some thoughtful um, reflections on the reviews and your thoughts on the movies. I love hearing from you. So uh, feel free to do that in the comments below. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this review. Until next time, I will see you at the video store or at the thrift store or just out and about somewhere. But until next time, take good care of yourselves and I will see you in the next video.